All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask CoinSquare. I'm here with Chris Horlacher, CEO and co-founder of Equibit Group. And today we are talking about atomic swaps. Our viewers want to know what are they, how do they work? Super confusing stuff, but you're the expert. Well, these are the big development item in, in the crypto space right now uh, because the, 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 the philosophy, I guess, of blockchain is that we, we don't use intermediaries. We're not going to do that. So the atomic swap is the solution to doing a secure trade of assets either from the same chain uh, or across chains. And that's why sometimes they're called cross-chain atomic swaps. Uh, but I'm going to break this down for you so it's uh, hopefully digestible for your viewers. Uh, so the, 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 at, the mo at its most basic level, an atomic swap is a sequence of transactions that happen uh, on one or more blockchains. And they're atomic because they all happen or, or none of them happen. Uh, so it, there, there is no stopping halfway through and one guy walks away with both assets. That cannot happen in this scenario. And this is why this is so important uh, for wallets to be able to do a decentralized exchange. Uh, because you know, depending on the jurisdiction you're in, the government may take a favorable or a less favorable view of cryptocurrencies, you know, as we're seeing in South Korea and China and North Korea yeah. uh, and Venezuela, uh, you know, they're shutting down the exchanges. And the exchanges are great in the sense that they function as fantastic liquidity providers and um, they're really good at, at uh, price discovery. And, and so that's, uh, that, that's their big, uh, the big value that they bring to the market. But it, there, there is something called the over-the-counter market. And uh, in securities in particular, this is where people will exchange things off of, an ex off of a, a stock exchange. So this is where the atomic swaps come in uh, because it will allow uh, crypto asset holders to do a secure over-the-counter exchange peer-to-peer -peer with no broker, no exchange, nobody but you and the other party uh, involved in the sequence. And so in order to do these, um, the, they rely heavily on something called a hashed time-locked transaction. Okay. So that's a bit of a mouthful, so we're gonna call those HTLCs. Uh, let, let me unpack what that is for you. Sure. Uh, because we have essentially programmable money uh, or programmable assets, uh, if, I if we decide to enter into a trade and you wanna send me Bitcoins and I'm gonna send you Equibits, uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna put some conditions on these transactions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, we're gonna submit our transaction to the network, but we're gonna put two locking scripts on them. You're gonna do it on your Bitcoin transaction, I'm gonna do it on my Equibit transaction. And the first lock is called a hash lock. And so the hash lock will pin down those Bitcoins and those Equibits in the address that we sent them to. Uh, and they will stay there and they cannot be moved from that address unless not only do I have a valid signature, but I also have to produce the answer to the hash lock. I see. And the ha so the, think of the hash lock a lot like the mining reward, uh, uh, which uh, you are trying to solve the solution to a cryptographic puzzle. Uh, with, with a hash lock, it's a bit different because one of us already knows the answer. Uh, and it's the person who knows the answer who actually does the, the transaction first. Because if you know the answer and I, I, I can't execute my Equibit transaction unless I know what your hash lock was on your Bitcoin transaction because I'm going to use the same one on Equibit. I see. So we, we use the exact same hash lock. The other, two, the other, the other lock is a time lock. Uh, because we don't want to hit the situation where uh, l l let's say, you know, someone forgets what the hash lock was, the, then, you know, they, we don't want those assets to be forever stuck in those addresses and right. essentially be taken out of circulation. So there's the hash lock, but then also there's a, the time lock. And so what that means is after a certain period of time has elapsed, we will be able to take that back. Gotcha. And so that is essentially, you know, the duration that, you know, this is good for. We have to complete what we need, what we need to do to execute this transaction. Otherwise, the time locks expire and we can just take our stuff off the table and, and, and go, go our separate ways. Now, with the hash locks, once both of us have uh, 
in, in essence, escrowed our assets. Uh, you will then decide, okay, well, I'm gonna take those equibits. So in order to take them, you have to produce the answer to the hash lock. Your time lock on your Bitcoins is still in force though, and you are prevented from taking your Bitcoins. Gotcha. Now, having used the answer to that hash lock to get my equibits, I can now take that same answer and get your Bitcoins. Ah, I see. And, I am, and because your time lock is in effect, I am the only one who can do that. And so now we've completed the trade. And the, because of the time locks, at any point along this, if we time out, we can just take, you, you know, you take your Bitcoins, I take my Echo Bits, and you know, we go off somewhere else, uh, or, or, or maybe we try again. Right, mm -hmm. awesome. Thanks for watching Ask Coin Square. If you have a question, leave it down below in the comments, and you could be featured on the next episode.